The Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary. Maury Amsterdam. Larry Matthews. And Mary Tyler Moore. and Swiss cheese on a bagel. Lox and Swiss cheese? Well, here's lox and Swiss cheese, but it's on a hamburger bun. It's my hamburger bun, but I ordered a hamburger. <laughs> well, here's a hamburger, but it's on my rye bread without the corned beef, which is on his bagel. <laughs> well, what do you think we ought to do? Well, I think we ought to strip our sandwiches and rebuild them correctly. Good idea. All right. Okay, yeah, you see this? You see that, that goes right. on there. That's right. That's fine. That's fine. Well, I'm all set. That's it. Hold it! Wait a minute! I got a bagel sandwich on rye. <laughs> oh. My cover. Oh. Don't bite that! <laughs> If my calculations are right, I think you'll find my corned beef buried under your hamburger. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, couple of more fingerprints. The FBI will want this for the file. <laughs> it's why do we keep ordering from that same place? They never get an order straight. All right, tomorrow we'll eat out. Okay. Hey, Sal, if that's for me, tell her I left the money under the girdle. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Lauren. Yeah, he just did a rewrite on a bagel. <clears throat> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Hey, Rob, it's Laura. She sounds very upset. Oh. Hi, honey. Anything wrong? What, Richie? What, who bit him in the head? What happened? Shh. Honey, what, what bit him in the head? <laughs> a giant woodpecker? <laughs> Giant what? <laughs> what, honey? Who who was he with when this bird attacked him? With no one. He was alone. Well, he and Freddie had a fight this morning, and Richie's been playing alone all afternoon. I see. Sad little boy, alone with his imagination. Oh, you think he's looking for sympathy? Well, could be. What's he doing now? Well, he's soaking in the bathtub. It's the only thing that'll keep him quiet. Well, keep him soaking a while. Oh, I hate to. His fingers and toes are all pruney. <laughs> Honey, would you rather have him pruney or hysterical? Pruney. All right. Well, I'll try to get home early. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. How do you like that kid and his imagination? You mean he really thinks he was attacked by a woodpecker? Yeah, how about that? Well, he's just like his daddy. Oh, are you often attacked by giant woodpeckers? No, but... When I was a kid and I really wanted some sympathy, I had this big imaginary lion that used to attack me on it. <laughs> Poor little kid, I know what he's going through, though. You know why your kid makes up these weird stories about being attacked by big birds? Why? Because you live in the suburbs. What are you talking about? Well, if he lived in a city like any normal kid, he'd be attacked by a nice street gang. <laughs> hey, Rob, why don't you buy him a toy? I don't think he wants a toy. See, he had, he had a fight with a kid next door, and I think he wants a friend. Well, they got those kind of dolls in the store, too. Those big dolls, giant dolls. You wind them up, and you pull a string, and they go, I am your friend. <laughs> then they kick you in the shins and go play with somebody else. But you're making jokes, and he's worried about Richie. Oh, no, he'll be fine. Kids are so resilient. By the time I get home tonight, he will have forgotten completely about it. Mommy's after me, Mommy! Mommy's after me! You. The giant woodpecker, he was in my bedroom. Now, what was he doing in your bedroom? He was pecking at the things on my dresser. All right, let's go see the woodpecker. He's not there anymore. He's not there? No, I threw my submarine at him and he flew away. All right. 
right, young man. That's enough of this nonsense. Go put some clothes on. No, not unless you close my window. Richie, there's no need to close your window. But I'm going back in the bathtub. Richie. <laughs> He says it's a real giant woodpecker and it's after him. Honey, I'm sure when Richie and Freddie make up and they've forgotten all about it, the big bird will fly away. Doctor, they're friends again and the bird still lives. <laughs> they made up? This afternoon on the phone. On the phone? Well, Richie was afraid to go out of the house. Anyway, I don't think Freddie's the reason he invented the bird. It must be something else that's bothering him. Well, yeah, I'd say so. But what? Well, it's got to be one of three things. School, home, or friends. Well, it can't be school. He loves it, and he loves his teacher. Who, Miss Hartnett? No, Mrs. Schoenbaum. She got married last week. <laughs> Honey, that could be it. Maybe, maybe he's carrying a torch for her. Carrying a torch at his age? Well, I mean, maybe more like a match, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, those little guys like that develop powerful crutches on their teachers. Boy, I remember I had a teacher that I would have married in a minute. Miss Eisenstadt, gorgeous redhead with a figure like you never saw. What year was this? Third. Grade school. <laughs> no, college. <laughs> no, honey, of course it was grade school, but... You know, I was really crushed when Miss Eisenstadt became Mrs. Factor. Oh, I don't think it's school. I suppose it could be home. Honey, have you scolded him or embarrassed him in front of his friends or had a fight with him or anything? No. We've been the best of buddies. How about you? No, we're still pals. I don't think it's me. Wait a minute. I think it is you. I just remembered Millie told me what Freddie and Richie had the fight about. What? Well, Freddie said that he thought your show was rotten and that you were a rotten writer. Oh. Oh, honey, that must be it. Of course, there's nothing that ups more upsetting to a little kid than being told his father's a rotten anything. Do you think it's upsetting enough for him to invent a giant woodpecker? What did he say he wanted me to do with a woodpecker? Get a gun and kill it. Of course, honey. He could brag about that. He could? Well, sure. What if I am a rotten writer? I'm a good protector, and that's more important to a little kid. <laughs> you think that's it? Oh, I'm positive. I'm so sure. If it isn't, I'll eat my... Hat? No, I'm not that sure. <laughs> I will eat a little dinner, though. Okay, we're ready in a minute. Honey, where's that air rifle your father gave Rich for Christmas? It was your father, dear. Oh. It's in the closet. Good. What are you going to do with a gun? I'm going to kill myself a woodpecker. Well, I thought we decided there wasn't any woodpecker. There isn't. Well, then why do you need the gun? I'm going to slay the imaginary dragon, that's all. Why don't you use an imaginary gun? Well, because I don't think he's going to ask me to see the dragon, but he may want to see the sword I killed him with. Yeah, and uh, then when, uh, when did this uh, woodpecker come along? Yesterday afternoon. And that was uh, after you had your fight with Freddie, wasn't it? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Rich, would you uh, be proud of me if I killed that woodpecker for you? Oh, boy, would you, Daddy? Rich, would you tell me this? Would you be more proud of me if I wrote a great television show or if I killed the woodpecker? If you kill the woodpecker, you gonna kill it, Daddy? Rich, I've got a little surprise for you. I already have. Love no. <laughs> with this gun, Rich. Where'd you get the gun? Can oh, I have the no, gun? No, Rich, I think the gun is just for the woodpecker. It's got to go back where it came from. Now, you sit down and eat your breakfast. Tell me how you killed the woodpecker, Daddy. Well, <laughs> Rich, last night, I went out in the yard. And I sneaked around the yard looking behind bushes and in trees. And all of a sudden, I heard a rustling up in that old pine tree. And I shot this gun up in the air, and out flew the most enormous woodpecker you ever saw. It wasn't that big, Daddy. <laughs> well, it wasn't enormous. It was uh, enormous. Yeah, it was orange and black feathers. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, Rich, I took a bead on that orange and black bird that's been bothering my son, and I pulled the trigger, and pow! No more woodpecker. <laughs> Well, yeah, Rich, you can go outside and play and you won't have to be afraid anymore. Where is he? <laughs> What'd you say, Rich? I said, where's the bird? Well, um, why, why do you want to know that? I want to take him to school for show and tell. Show and tell? Yeah, nobody ever brought a dead woodpecker to school before. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure that they, they didn't. Rich, <clears throat> look, son. 
It wouldn't really be a good idea to take that dead woodpecker to class, though, would it? Would it? No, I guess not. All the girls would scream. <laughs> That's right, son. What's that for? For killing that bad bird. Are you proud of Daddy? I sure am. Where are you going, Rich? To go, Freddy! Well, you're pretty smart, aren't you? Oh, very. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, proud of me? Not as much as you are of you. Well, it's kind of a good feeling to, to solve a problem like that. It's, it's like figuring out the solution to a good mystery. I just hope Richie doesn't expect you to solve all his problems with a BB gun. Yeah, that's right. Well, we just got to pay him a little more attention, I think. Boy, being a father makes me hungry. You got any chocolate pudding? For breakfast? <laughs> well, I'm, don't you think I deserve some kind of a reward for my deft handling of this problem? All right. Come on, let me handle this, honey. He bit me in the uh, Rich, head. just calm down. Come on, sit he down. He bit me in the head. All right, just calm oh. down. Now, tell Daddy, where did you see this woodpecker just now? Out in the front yard. He came out of the tree. You didn't kill a giant woodpecker, Daddy. Rich, Rich, you know there isn't any giant woodpecker. Is he all right? Oh, he's fine, Millie. He saw the woodpecker again. Yeah, that's the biggest woodpecker I ever saw. Uh, <laughs> Billy, we're not going to humor him anymore. Who's humoring him? That is the biggest woodpecker I ever saw. It looks like a glandular case. Billy, <laughs> oh, really, you're not kidding, are you? Why should I kid? He was pecking your kid in the head. <laughs> I, who, who else saw the bird? Well, Freddie and Ellen and all the children, this thing swooped out of the tree and went right after Richie's head and it followed him to the front door. You didn't kill the giant woodpecker, did you, Daddy? Well, no, Rich, no, I, I thought I did. I, I probably hit him a glancing blow. <laughs> Rich, you go to school, I'm Daddy. I'm not Dad. going to school until you get rid of that bird. Now, Richie, that's silly. Daddy's going to take care of him. That's right, Rich. Now, Daddy's going to... What? Well, I don't know. <laughs> No, you say there were other kids out there just now? Yeah, five of them. What, the bird didn't attack any of the others? No, just rich. It was like it had a grudge against them. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why would a bird have a grudge against a nice little kid like Rich? Well, maybe he hit the bird or pinched it or oh, something. Oh, Millie. Well, what do you think? I don't know what I think, but I, I'm not, no bird's going to persecute my kid and get away with it. I'm going to do something about it. Hello? Uh, is this the animal shelter? Well, my name is Robert Petrie. I wonder if you could help me out. Yeah, my son, <laughs> you're probably not going to believe this, but my son was, was attacked by a woodpecker. <laughs> yeah, a giant woodpecker. Every, hello? <laughs> oh, I don't blame him. I would have hung up, too. Well, tell them to come out here and see for themselves if they don't believe you. Well, those are my plans, honey. I don't blame them. Uh, hello, uh, look, this is Robert Petrie again. Look, if you don't believe me, you could come out here and see for yourself. There's a great big wood... Huh? No, this is not Steve Allen. <laughs> so I'm saying, it's not a rib. Robert Petrie, P-E... What, what difference does it make what I do for a living? It, all right, I'm a comedy writer. Now, look, this sadistic bird is persecuting my boy. He... Hello? Hello? <laughs> oh, boy, how do you... What's the matter with those people? You shouldn't have admitted comedy writer. Oh, well, how do you like it? Boy, you pay taxes, and you pay taxes for these services, right. and you, once in your life you call up and ask him for a little help and you can't get it. Now listen to me. Listen. Don't talk. Just listen to me now. I am telling you the truth. I am serious. If, well, I don't care. If a bird was trying to peck holes in your son's head, you'd be a little beside yourself, too. Now, this bird is a menace. I want you to get rid of him. What? Well, you can't. Huh? Well, all right, what's her number? Four, four. Yeah, got it. Thank you. What'd they say? Woodpeckers come under the jurisdiction of the game, Mort. <laughs> you mean there's nothing they can do? No, not unless the woodpecker attacks our cat. <laughs> Hello? Hello, uh, sir, my, is, is this the game, Warden? Sir, my name is Robert Petrie. I wonder if you could send a man out here right away. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd rather uh, tell you about it when you got out here. Well, because a lot of people have been hanging up on me. I'm... 
Look, I'll make a deal with you, sir. Uh, if I tell you about it over the phone, will you be a friendly game warden and not hang up on me? <laughs> Good. You see, this uh, big black and orange woodpecker has been trying to peck holes in my son's head. Every time he goes outside, hello? <laughs> Game warden. I'll tell you something. I'm going to get him this time. You watch my smoke now. Hello. Help. Help. There's a fiendish man out in his yard shooting birdies. <laughs> yes, birdies. He's out there now. Send the game warden over right away. 148 Bunyam Meadow Road. Hello, guys. Now, Mrs. Helper, you say you're a witness. And remember, you're talking to a game warden. Yeah. Well, I saw this woodpecker attack the boy in the head. Well, the... Now, uh, did your son own a slingshot? No, he doesn't. Are you suggesting that our boy would take... Madam, you made a charge against one of our county's birds. <laughs> now, I need the pack. The facts are that your bird is bothering our child. Well, it's nesting time. Maybe your child is bothering her child. When a bird is preparing a nest, she's very protective. Well, we're protective too, Warden. Now, isn't there some way you can get rid of this bird? Now, before we start getting rid of things, can anybody here give me an accurate description of this alleged bird? Well, it was large. It was orange and black. Orange where and black where? <laughs> Look, this isn't any, a murder trial. Can't you just go out there and shoot some buckshot up in a tree and, and get it over with? Mr. Petri, there might be many birds in that tree. Are you suggesting that we wipe out whole families of innocent birds just to avenge your son? We just want to get rid of this one crazy bird. Well, I think I have all I need now. I'll just go back to the office and uh, discuss your case with my superior. Will you tell me what there is to discuss? Why can't you just arrest patience, that crazy bird? Patience, patience. Everything will be taken care of in good time. Well, what do we do in the meantime? Well, I suggest you keep your child in the house. Well, look, he has to go and come from school. He has to be protected from the bird. Now, what do you recommend for that? Well, have him wear a pith helmet and sunglasses. <laughs> you want my son to wear a pith helmet and sunglasses? And I would suggest, sir, that you don't try to do anything foolish. Now, look, what could be more foolish than a seven-year-old kid going around in a pith helmet and sunglasses? Well, calm down. I'm not going to calm down until we rid the community of that neurotic vulture out there. Mr. Petrie, hunting and killing birds out of season is against the law, and I am paid to enforce that law. Well, it looks to me like there'll be a law about pecking holes in the little boys' heads. <laughs> I'll be in touch with you. <coughs> Why do you like that guy? A pith helmet and sunglasses. He, I'm going to take care of it myself. If you want anything done, you got to take care of it yourself. Well, if you're not going to do anything foolish. I certainly am. What's he going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? He's going to get rid of a bird. What's he going to do? Cook it? I <laughs> your pot. <laughs> it's all right. Did you see him? Yeah, he's sitting up in that pine tree, laughing at me. I don't blame him. You did look kind of silly, standing out there banging on the pot and yelling, Yahoo! <laughs> I can't understand it. Why would that bird pick on one little boy and nobody else at all? Honey, are you sure that Richie some way hasn't been bothering that bird? Oh, Rob, you know Richie's not the kind of boy who bothers birds. No, anyway, this one couldn't be bothered, possibly. I, but I scared away 20 sparrows and two cats and one old lady with an umbrella with that pot. <laughs> oh, 
annoyed, not that vulture, though. He sat up on that... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Making fun of me? Why does he hate our boy? I don't know. Maybe he loves him. Huh? Well, maybe pecking a boy on the head is a woodpecker's way of showing love. Well, you did say he flew into Richie's window, didn't you? Yeah, Rich said he came in and was pecking at the things on his bureau. What things are on his bureau? Oh, I don't know. About a thousand baseball cards, his lucky rock, his hairbrush, picture of Willie Mays, stuff like that. Hi. What? Honey, what? is that old birdcage still in the closet? Well, no, it's in the garage. In why? the garage? Good. You go open Richie's window. All right, but why? Oh, and don't move any of the things on his bureau. All right, I won't, but where are you going? I'm going to try a ridiculous theory that just might turn out to be brilliant. What time do you get home from school? Oh, I'm going to pick him up in about a half hour. Oh, I hope that's long enough. For what? I'm going to catch me a bird. <laughs> All right, Millie and I will search the house. He's not in here either. Well, come on. <laughs> Simple. If you look at life like a big mystery story. Well, tell us how you did it. Well, honey, in that cage is the key right there. It looks like a hairbrush. It is your hairbrush, Rich. Well, what's the hairbrush got to do with well, it? Well, I used it as bait to lure that bird into the cage. As bait? Mm-hmm. Sit down, honey, and I'll tell you all about it. I got to thinking, what was there about Richie's head that was different than anybody else's head? His hair, naturally. Yeah, this is exciting. Then I thought, why would a bird be interested in anybody's hair? What can a bird do with hair? Build a nest. Precisely, my dear. <laughs> Said that just like Ronald Coleman. Thank you, Millie. <laughs> but why did the bird just pick on Richie and no one else? You mean, why did she pick on Richie? She? Yes. Richie's assailant is an expectant woodpecker. How can you tell? Oh, they get that certain look about it. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you figure it out? Well, the game warden said it was nesting time, and she began building her nest with uh, hair from Richie's hairbrush. Now, she liked Richie's hair, and she didn't care whether it was new or used hair. <laughs> so you see, Rich, she wasn't trying to hurt you. She just wanted some of your hair to lay her eggs in. Now, young man, will you listen to your mommy when she tells you to keep your hairbrush clean? No. What do you mean, no? I like to be a nest. Here, Woodpecker. Want some hair? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's your alleged woodpecker, sir. Oh, well, that's a woodpecker, all right. Well, I guess I owe you folks an apology. What are you going to do with her? Uh, offer her to the Bronx Zoo, I guess. They're a little low on woodpeckers. <laughs> Here, Daddy, give this to the man for the bird. Well, you give it to him, Rich. Well, what do you got there, Sonny? Bag of bird seed? No, oh, bag of hair. Hair? <laughs> yes, nest building material. First time you ever volunteered for a haircut. <laughs> Now, Rich. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Petrie. We'll be glad to accept your hair, Sonny. There's my card. You just mail it to that address. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Oh, perfectly all right. You've heard of care packages, haven't you? Well, this will be a hair package. Pretty <laughs> 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 good, huh? Hair package, you know? Well, I'll run along with my bird. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> hair package, you know? <laughs> I guess I could be a comedy writer, couldn't I? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hair package. <Yeah. laughs> 